In Linux containers, um, I'm not going to go into much detail about the Linux containers. I will mostly talk about how it was integrated because it it's package, we can say package, uh, which touches uh, most of the OpenWRT infrastructure. So it can be a good way to learn. Um, this was a project that we did for Cisco. Uh, and I would like to especially thank my former manager, Mark Bauer, for supporting us here and uh, letting us mainline all this stuff. All right, so who am I? Um, OpenWRT developer. Um, I'm also working in a company with Sartura. We do um, consulting on embedded development and do the development as well. Uh, I personally like free open source software. Um, I started the career in a small ISP in Croatia. <coughs> so um, from there, I kind of, because it's ISP, they use TR069, so I also like remote management software. Um, back in the day, I did the uh, first TR069 implementation on OpenWRT, uh, then worked on some other projects re regarding uh, TR069. Um, lately, working on NetConfieng, also for, um, which is defined by the ITF. Most of you haven't heard it. Those of you who have, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, remote management, very interesting field to be uh, today. Okay, so Linux containers. Um, I copy pasted this text from uh, linuxcontainers.org site. Anybody doesn't know what Linux containers are? All good? Okay. So you can think of um, Linux containers like being um, uh, in the middle between uh, ch root and uh, fully flagged um, OS, okay? Uh, the kernel between the containers, the instances, is uh, shared, so one kernel. Um, why LXC and not some other virtualization type on OpenWRT? Okay, so LXC um, doesn't require any uh, hardware support for virtualization, so it can run literally on any SOC today. Um, so that's why LXC, okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to fill up a couple of details that um, Stephen mentioned at the beginning about OpenWRT, UBUS. Uh, I will talk about RPCD and the um, module for RPCD called LXC. Some additional uh, Linux kernel stuff that are needed um, for LXC to work properly. Uh, BusyBox as well, and also we made um, Lucy interface. Um, so what I would like to say that this is all now in mainline. So if you want to like check it out, uh, play with it, you can. Um, I think I should mention why LXC, okay? So let's say you want to allow somebody constricted access to your device, okay? So how to do it? You don't want to give him full visibility in the system. With containers, you also can like um, provide um, third-party service providers into this box because, let's face it, router is running 24/7 in your home. It's always on, or has or should have always the internet connectivity. So you could do a lot of interesting stuff uh, on the device. Um, while here, let me just mention. So uh, back when I pushed it. So I was running four LXC containers. Uh, each one had a dedicated um, uh, LAN port, okay, because it, it's possible to do that via switch. Each had like internet connectivity. Um, those were rather minimal containers. Um, CPU usage is not that much affected. Uh, RAM usage uh, also depends what you run inside the container. And you can have like minimal container. I think Hauke mentioned that he did a stripped version of uh, two megabytes or something like that. Yeah, I think about two megabytes. Yeah, okay. Um, basically, uh, how much things you put and want to run in container, uh, that's how much resources it will take. Okay, so 
OpenWRT feeds, um, that's the place where we put packages, okay? So, as Steven mentioned, nowadays feeds are um, on GitHub and uh, the way to contribute, um, if it was not clear um, so far, is to send the pull requests, okay? So we have many feeds, we have packages, routing, telephony, Lucy, management, and I hope I didn't forget any other feeds. Um, okay, so when it comes specifically to LXC um, project and to do the integration with OpenWRT, first uh, we need to properly package the LXC, okay? So I'm not going to go through the logical steps like um, uh, logical containers of where is where and how it's put, but in the development phase, the steps were mixed up a bit, obviously. So we have uh, for LXC support uh, and OpenWRT integration three packages. That is LXC, that is RPCD mod LXC, and uh, Lucy app LXC. All of those are available in the packages feed and uh, there are some tiny hooks uh, which I will cover later that uh, you need to enable in order for the thing to work. All right, so making a package, um, pretty standard procedure. So um, this is a screenshot from make menu config uh, when you go inside LXE. I wanted like to give maximum flexibility, so um, literally every command that um, can work from the LXC package um, I made available so users can select. Um, some of them do not work. Uh, those are mostly like um, shell scripts from uh, LXC uh, package which depend mostly on bash and we don't use bash. Um, so those are not here. More or less with these you can do uh, all the control you want uh, when you have access to the console, all right? Um, next, uh, okay, so it's not, we want to uh, enable a bit more user interaction. It's not like, okay, now we want to control LXCs just by ty typing in the terminal. So, how to do the integration? Uh, Steven mentioned that uh, in OpenWRT we have uh, UBUS. So, UBUS is a um, bus that we use in uh, OpenWRT. Uh, all the daemons are, or the core daemons, we could say, are connected via this um, bus. So, we have a UBUS daemon and command, command line utility UBUS. Uh, you can interact with this uh, via C and Lua API. Um, and also via UBUS, uh, Steven mentioned in his talk, you can, uh, from the UHTTPD, which is a web server, also interact with this bus internally using uh, JSON uh, RPC version 2. All right, so now after the introduction uh, of UBUS, we have a special daemon called RPCD in uh, OpenWRT. So, um, Official explanation would be uh, OpenWRT UBUS RPC backend server. What that uh, in practice means it's, um, it's a daemon which hooks into UBUS. Um, without plugin support, it offers UBUS calls for session and UCI. Uh, sessions are used for the HTTP uh, control and access. UCI for um, accessing UC, uh, UCI files via UBUS. Uh, in the main RPCD projects, you have um, at the time, at now, uh, file plugin, RPC Sys plugin, that's a new one, and IW info for fiddling with the wireless. Um, and also, very interesting features, not many people are aware of it. So, you can very easily write a shell script, which, uh, if placed correctly and supports uh, correct arguments, uh, it's described on the wiki how to do that. Basically, RPCD can pick up the shell script and uh, you can, and exposes its functionality over UBUS. So if you want to hack something really quickly, you can write a shell script, RPCD will pick it up and you can talk with this shell script via UBUS. Okay, so RPCD 
can uh, load plugins and uh, expose this functionality via UBUS. Okay, so for in first iteration, uh, we did the integration with LXC and Lua, uh, and after we like got our hands on on LXC more in depth, we figured that we can just do this implementation and it would be a lot less um, heavy. Uh, so we have a package, RPCD mod LXC, which is basically, um, uh, basically how to say, um, RPCD plugin, and uh, all the source code is in this package uh, on GitHub. So because we don't maintain it outside, all the source code is there. Okay, so um, once this uh, plugin is loaded, uh, if you do a uh, UBUS uh, to list what is available on LXC, so this is what this plugin supports. So you can uh, start, reboot, shutdown, stop, freeze, unfreeze, rename, create, destroy, and list uh, all the available containers on the system. And uh, of course, you can have um, specific arguments what is needed per uh, certain command. So after having this piece done, uh, we have UBUS through which we can control containers um, very easily. All right. So about so usually when you want to add a certain uh, kernel modules, uh, you add those in, um, how to say, uh, package kernel modules and you put it there so the kernel module that is not essential to the system can be selected by the users in make menu config, etc. So it's added uh, dynamically, so not always on the image. However, Certain things needed in um, in kernel for LXC to work cannot be built as a module. All right, so I have written it here. So these are the three groups that can be found in uh, config slash config dash kernel dot in file. Um, basically, uh, if in make menu config you go into configuration. It will ask you, uh, like, enable kernel support, enable busybox support, so it will select these things. Um, in case you are wondering what's the overhead of, uh, what's the size increase of kernel when you enable these things, it's a two and a half kilobytes on MIPS SOC. Um, also, uh, except for kernel, we also, because of the um, LXC create uh, utility, we need some extra features from BusyBox shell. Uh, yeah, BusyBox shell. We um, enable option to select that as well, which is not by default and cannot be brought in by module. Okay, so um, now we are coming to the last part, which is the LUCI. Once we had that all, all done, uh, it was really easy to do the uh, front end. Um, it's not simple front-end because you will see it in a second, uh, but we had all the APIs exposed via UBUS through which we could access it uh, from the Lucy. All right, and the package is called Lucy App LXC and also can be found in the packages feed. This is how it looks. So um, you can like create new containers, uh, start, stop, uh, delete containers, and do other stuff uh, when you press the more button. All right, so uh, that's it. Um, any questions maybe? Uh, I heard from few people here that they already did use LXC, whether or not they are aware of it. But um, yeah, so it's nice to see uh, mainline work being used, so definitely. Any questions? Oh, sorry. Is it possible to have um, containers automatically start a boot up? Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure whether that is in mainline, but that should be fairly easy to add because we do have like, I think in its script uh, to handle the containers.
So definitely possible, yes. Okay? Thank you very much, Luca. Thank you.